Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing well today. So the other day, YouTube took down my video on Shannon Sharp. Um, and his whole debacle with Michelle, they took it down for community guidelines, even though other people are talking about it, the audio is all over social media. It is what it is. So I want to come on here and do an update on the situation. So if you guys do not know, last night, Shannon Sharp took to social media to let everybody know that he is now selling my Michelle merch. Okay. And this did not go over well with a lot of people. He got drug up and down Twitter last night. And so this entire situation is making me feel like everything concerning this whole leak of um, Shannon Sharp accidentally, and I use my air quotes, going live on Instagram Live was nothing more than a setup. And this is why I believe that. So before we even get into his whole post and him trying to promote the That's My Michelle shirts, um, I want to go back to what was going down with Shannon Sharp and Ocho Cinco about six days ago. So before the leak ever happened, because I do watch Nightcap when I can, um, it was going around that Shannon Sharp had publicly humiliated Ocho Cinco for being late to the set of Nightcap. And Ocho was trying to explain to him, like, you know, I didn't mean to be late. Um, the person who came to get me, they came out to shake my hand and they locked the keys in the car. And he had all the proof for this, but... The way Shannon Sharp was talking to him was very condescending. It was reminding a lot of people of how Skip Bayless used to talk to Shannon Sharp and how Shannon Sharp would low key just kind of take it, you know, for the most part. But it's very interesting that he has all this, you know, energy for Ocho when Ocho is saying it was a mistake. So I want you guys to kind of watch the back and forth here. And then also, even before Ocho got on set, Shannon Sharp was very angry about um, audio issues that he was facing, that he was, you know, hitting the microphone and screaming, you know, God damn it, and all this other stuff. Um, he was just really showing a different side of himself. So I want to try to go ahead and watch these two clips. We're sorry for the technical difficulties. I don't know if it's me or if it's on the other end, but I promise you that won't happen again. Guys, please make sure you do us a favor. Go check out Shea by Laportier. If Shea is not in the state or a city near you, you can order it and it comes. Guys, damn it! His name was Alex. He was really cool, really cool dude. And um, as soon as he opened the car door and he got out the car door to greet me, the car door locked by accident. The car door locked by accident. So I would have been on time, but the fact that we had to wait for the tow truck and them to bring the Slim Jim was the reason for my delay and getting to the hotel a little late. But I'm here now. I'm here now. Let me ask you a question. So when you go, uh, uh, when you go to ESPN, you go, you take, you have people pick you up from the airport. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you don't. Uh, when you do inside the NFL, you have people pick you up from the uh, airport. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah. No, you don't. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out why, with your show, would you choose to take that route when you don't take that route for ESPN but and inside the NFL? I wasn't lying. I'm dead. I'm dead serious. When I when uh, I fly into Philly, I have somebody pick me up from Philly. When I fly into New York, I have somebody pick me up from New York. I'm I'm, I'm serious. And Matt, hold well, on. That ain't what they told me. I just I just talked. Hold to on. ESPN listen to travel. me. Now it's documented. Oh, huh? it's documented. I, I'm just telling. You, but all you I'm have to do you is just search my me. tweets. I've been doing it the past 15 years. I always do this. I'm not saying that. Yes, sir. Talk but to me now. Ocho. Right. Again. Ocho, this right, is part right, of your right, show. Right. Right. Why would you be late? Why would you run the risk of being well, late? Well, I didn't want to be late. I just told you what happened. I would have been on time. But due to unfortunate circumstances of him locking the keys in his car, which I documented, I was just a little late. I went. Why don't you, Ocho, why don't you just, why don't you just have the people that you're working for just have them to book like your car service. service? I don't like car service. It's okay. I don't like how them people, they, 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 be, they be mean and they be bougie. I don't like, you know, they be in suits and ties and shit. I, that don't make me comfortable. That don't make me comfortable. What makes me comfortable is like, okay. like being able to, to, to sit down and talk. Wait, you want to be comfortable me, or you want to be professional? No, I don't want to be. No, I want to be comfortable. I want to talk to people that I can relate to. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm just telling. But you but see, here's the thing, Ocho. You say you want to be professional. You want to do ESPN. You want to do all these professional things. But you want to take a bootleg. No, ride. no, no. I want to. Re- I want to remain my authentic self, the same way I always been, and do those things. Is that okay? Okay. No. Okay. Let me know how that work out for you. Colorado lost to Nebraska. All right. So you guys just saw that clip. So as this went viral, um, Shannon Sharp came back to try and address it and was basically trying to gaslight the audience as if the audience was reaching and trying to cause a rift and, you know, saying, I just want Ocho to be the best Ocho he can be. But the whole time you can tell Ocho Cinco, who's, you know, Ocho's cool. He's always been very humble. He even admits to wearing fake jewelry, you know, things like that. You can tell Ocho's just biting his tongue. He's just kind of letting Shannon get whatever off his chest that he wants to get off his chest for the public. So y'all go ahead and watch this. Last night we had a situation. Um, Everything is like in my computer. It's a little different for me here in the studio, my studio compared to you at home. Everything is linked, TV. I mean, the camera, uh, the iPad, the computer, everything is linked. And what had happened was, is that as I'm talking, the somehow it clicked over to the video. So that's what I was hearing playing back in my ear. So it wasn't anything. It wasn't like a malfunction. Somehow the uh, audio had clicked on on the video that was playing. So I could hear that back in my ear. So that was nothing that people back <laughs> back at, uh, at uh, in the studio um, was doing. That was no fault of their own. That was just something that had just all of a sudden happened. And it just took us a minute to figure out. We troubleshoot after we got off the show and we got it figured out. That won't happen again. I can assure you of that. Other technical dif- difficulties might arise, but that won't happen. And then, guys, I, look, there's been a lot said. Well, um, you trying to do the Ocho, what Skip did to you, blah, blah, blah. No. What I am going to do is that I'm going to push, I'm going to pull, I'm going to drag Ocho to a level that he didn't think he could get to. See, I heard, I saw some of the comments, oh, 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 um, you too serious. It's just a little internet show. It's a YouTube show. For you, that's all you see it as. But that's not the vision that I shared with Ocho when we sat down. That's not the vision that Ocho say, um, we can do that? Yes. I say, you see what the other guys are getting, but I just know Ocho can. And I think I, I don't, I th- for me, when I look at Ocho, I see a guy that wants to do it, but has never been in a situation where it was had to be like, okay, Ocho, you can just do your thing. Ocho, you so great. I'm going to make, oh, I'm going to force Ocho to be great. He ain't got no choice. He ain't going to have no choice but to be great. And when we rise with Nightcap, when y'all see, Man, man, they did it. All right, so you guys just watched that video. So like I said, this was the talk of the town all over YouTube, this riff with Shannon Sharp publicly humiliating Ocho. And the thing that I find very interesting is that he's coming at Ocho Cinco like he's an employee, like he works for Shannon. Let's not forget that Ocho has been doing this social media thing for years. Shannon came from television, okay? Ocho's been, you know, talking about sports and things like that on YouTube for a while. And so Shannon wanted to hook up with him. Why? Because Ocho's very social media savvy. So when they went into this business, this whole Nightcap venture, Nightcap is not Shannon Sharp's show. People think that Nightcap is like a, an extension of Club Shay Shay. It's not. Club Shay Shay and Nightcap are two totally different things. Nightcap is a joint venture between him and Chad Ochocinco. They go 50-50 on Nightcap. So for him to be trying to talk to his partner like he's his employee is insane. And I get professionalism. I get being on time. Um, but I also understand that things happen. And as somebody who is a boss, you have to understand that you praise in public, but you shame and you check people in private. When I have any issues with something that Madia has posted or a mistake that she's made, I'm not going to publicly chastise her on my Instagram platform or on Discord. That is insane. Any issues I have with her, I'm going to message her. I'm going to call her personally and let her know. I'm never going to take it to the public. So I don't understand why, you know, that's rule 101 when being a quote unquote boss or business partner is that you guys give each other mutual respect. And I just, I wasn't liking the way Shannon came off. And, um, you know, so I found this interesting that that's what was going on last week with Shannon Sharp and the whole nightcap drama. Then literally... 
Two days after a lot of people were talking about canceling Shannon, Shannon's mask is slipping, all of a sudden we get the Maya Michelle debacle where he claimed that he, you know, him and Michelle were smashing and he threw the phone on the bed. But interestingly enough, when you look at the phone and the image, it looks like it's on the floor. It doesn't look like it's on the bed because if it was on the bed, it'd be bouncing up and down. So it's obviously on the floor. He's claiming it just turned on. And, you know, at first I try to give him grace because he's a boomer. And I don't care that he's one year off of being a boomer. To me, he's a boomer, okay? I feel like... Initially, I thought like, okay, maybe it was an accident, things happen. But the more I kind of watch how everything's playing, uh, how everything is playing out, this was not an accident. Um, for a while now, like I said in my previous video that got took down, Shannon has been trying to shake the gay rumors. So let me go ahead and play you guys a flashback of my montage that I put together about all these people on social media talking about his sexuality. Y'all go ahead and check this out. You know who you should interview that'll break the internet? Who? That nigga that was at the game with him. Dick Print? Yes. Interview. They said the nigga named Dick Print. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dick Print, you want to come on the show? Come on. I don't give a fuck. God damn it. We got a chair that we, we going to put you up there, though, Dick Print. I ain't even going to lie to you. You got a lot of fruit booties that came on your podcast, boy. A lot of them. You got a lot of fruit booties came on your podcast. That's going to come out soon. Through 5150. Ain't no coincidence you have a lot of fruit booties you interview. Who you think, who you think, you think, dog, the street's eyes is wide open, man. I'm telling you, you ain't fooling nobody. Shay, Shay, Skip. Up there with smiling and yucking up with Stephen A. Smith. That's going to go bad one day. Because Stephen A. Smith a fuck nigga. Stephen A. Smith, the one who told people you got fired from FS1. Didn't nobody know that? Did nobody know you got fired? Stephen A. Smith put that out there, but every day you got to be like, yeah, uh, Stephen, you, 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 you. Mm. that's what we do. We don't want you to get fired up and catch no case, Shannon. And on top of that, Shannon, I know you got muscles and shit like that, but the homie, that shit for the, that's for the bitches. Or the niggas. Hollywood, when I got Hollywood, I flew you out the next day, and you said, I said, I want to dress my age. Hollywood said, um, Uncle Shay, you called me Uncle Shay from day one. You said, what else you need from me? I said, I need loyalty and I need honesty. He said, Uncle Shay, I'm going to ride with you till the wheels fall off. And when the wheels fall off, I'm going to get out and walk with you. Mm. To my All right, so the guy that Shannon Sharp is talking about is this guy right here. This is him, Hollywood, a.k.a. Dick Print. As I said in the previous video, this man is Shannon Sharp's stylist. This is also Shannon Sharp's lover. I'm telling you what I know. This guy, let me get away from that area. Hollywood, AKA Dick Print. This is Shannon Sharp's lover. Shannon Sharp is a homosexual. This is his lover. You can book. Shannon Sharp made a business decision that, you know what? I'm going to front and center my gay stylist, Hollywood Simpson. I'm going to front and center a gay stylist who has been connected to publicly with several former professional football players. Why do I call that a business decision? Because anyone familiar with how Hollywood and the entertainment industry works, anyone who has wet their finger and stuck it in the air and figured out how corporate culture works in America over the past decade, knew that the wind is blowing in the direction of everybody who calls themselves an ally of the LGBTQ. Tag with that, and I ain't got no problem with gay. I just, I'm just not gay. Yeah. And I've had you, all, you, I, a lot of my exes reached out. They's like, Shanna, where does gay is coming from? They need to talk. But see, that's the thing. What mm -hmm. do you get out of calling me gay? You feel good? That makes you feel good? Because you're saying things to on the radio behind your screen that you would never say to my face. What's the likelihood that Mike Epps would have said what he said to my face? Or any of these comedians that said what they said, they're not going to say that to my face, Ocho. You know that, I know that. Yeah. All right, so you guys just watched that montage. 
And um, a lot of that came to play because of, you know, how he was walking with that orange fanny pack. Now, what's also interesting is that he also fired Hollywood, a.k.a. Dick Prent, um, his stylist, the one that he was going to games with and sit in front and center with. He fired him in February. And a lot of people thought that was strange. You know, he tried to say that he fired him because, you know, his original stylist, who was a woman, she was so hurt at all the attention that, you know, Dick Prent was getting and, you know, Shannon went back to her. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this. Would, he was gay. Okay, that's his life. That's not mine. Mm -hmm. Hollywood and I, Hollywood no longer styles me. Why? Because I'm loyal to Shelly. She was hurt that after 20 plus years of being my stylist, mm -hmm. that I had gone outside to hire someone else. And someone else right. was getting the credit when she was there at CBS. She was there when mm -hmm. I started at Fox. She was there when I was going out and doing red carpet events. And I never had a problem. And for me, in my head, I thought I needed someone outside. Right. I didn't buy one thing new when Hollywood started styling me. Everything, all those LB jackets, all that stuff that I, I already had it. And a lot of the stuff she had already put together, but I took it apart. Mm. So when he put it back together, it was just what she had put together. All right, so you guys just watch that clip. To me, that screams insecurity because you stepped outside to find a new stylist and obviously whatever Hollywood was doing was actually getting you props on, you know, the dressing, the style, the swag. The way Hollywood was styling him was very different from Shelly. He wasn't walking around in bright, you know, three-piece suits and everything else, not knocking Shelly, but you could see a difference when Hollywood was styling him. And so for him to say that, oh, I, I went back to Shelly because I'm loyal. Well, why did you leave her in the first place? So I feel like he really fired Hollywood because he couldn't deal with the rumors and he couldn't deal with people saying that him and Hollywood had a relationship. If there was no relationship there and it was strictly professional, then there's nothing to address. You can't worry about what people say and what people think because no matter what, people are going to think what they want to think about you. That is their opinion between them and God. OK, your opinion of me is what? Simply your opinion. I say that all the time. I could care less if you like me or don't like me. It don't make or break me. I'm still going to make my moves. I'm still going to do what I got to do in life. I'm still going to wake up every morning. Thank God. Be blessed to, you know, see another day, spend time with my children and spend time with the people who really care about me. I can't worry about what the Internet says and what rumors that the Internet puts out there. And I think. Shannon should have the same mentality. I'm not going to cut off a, a great stylist or somebody that I'm close to who's done a good job. Because to me, his style really popped to me once he was with Hollywood. You know, Hollywood did a good job of styling him. I'm not going to throw him by the wayside because people keep saying I'm gay. If it's not true, then you let it be water off of a duck's back. If it don't apply, you let it fly. Because this man, this whole situation to me is screaming insecurity. And it's screaming he's doing this to prove that he's not quote unquote gay. Okay? So we have the whole My Michelle situation. Then he goes on to address it. And he's promoting his Viagra. Um, you know, he's promoting all these supplements and liquor. He's really using this as a cash grab. And to me, it's starting to look very disingenuous. It's looking less and less like an accident every day. So then Cameron ends up blasting him as well. You know, everybody had opinions. But, you know, Cameron and Mace been kind of calling him out for a while, you know. So Shannon has an issue with their podcast, with the It Is What It Is podcast. So Shannon decides to address Cameron and what he had to say about him. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys this clip. You can't go live without pushing like four or five buttons. That nigga cap is, bro. You, you gotta push like four <laughs> buttons to go live. You know how you pocket down somebody and you be like, oh. I called you by accident. Yeah, because you, you, you had to get a joint, you pocket down a lot, of course. <laughs> Cause it's just, you hit the button. Live, you gotta go to Instagram. Then you gotta go to post. Then you gotta go to live. Then they make sure that, do you, you sure you wanna go live? Yeah. You gotta hit four things to go live and to me, that was, my, he ain't go viral in a little minute. <laughs> and he's like, yo, let me go viral. Because look, let's check out the whole scenario, America. Look, first of all, I have a few things to say about this. 
the, the, the vocals is too clear. How you hear it that clear if you write not next to your phone? Sound like he had a mic Larry was selling me. Sound like he had the earpiece. <laughs> it's mad clear. You know what I'm saying? That's first and foremost. Secondly, you go up and apologize, but at the same time with your apology, you say, yo, Chad, I told you I'd get it in, man. I told you, I, I told you I'm getting in. <laughs> so you're apologizing to ESPN, then you're bragging. Thirdly, you say, you know who called me today? Cat Williams, he said, you ain't gay today. Why you gotta make an announcement you ain't gay? If people say you gay, whatever. <laughs> I don't think you need to make an announcement. I wore pink a lot of my career. And people be like, hey, Cam is gay, Cam is gay. And I'd be like, bring your mother around and see what happens if you bring your mother around or your sister. Let's see how gay I am. I don't need to make an announcement that I'm not gay. I'm not saying Shannon Sharp is gay or isn't gay. I don't care what his sexual preference is. I think this whole thing was staged. His, you know what happens after that? He talking about, oh, y'all crashed the site. All my merch sold out. All of a sudden, now all the merch sold out after, or after you on IG Live grunting. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I <just> told you. <laughs> yeah, man. I think this was a point. I think it's a Ponzi scam. But if it worked for you, um, it worked for you. But that's my personal opinion. This was a Ponzi. Me and Church, Big Church was talking about it. All of a sudden, you apologizing, bragging. Merch sells out. You're not gay. It's, it's too much going on in one Instagram joint. <laughs> Say, let me say this, uh -huh. Ocho, people trying to say it was staged. So let yeah. me say this. Today, I just lost an interview on Club Shay Shay. That would have been the most visible person I would have been able to interview right. to date. They said no. We got six and seven figure sponsors and advertisers saying, well, Shannon, we don't know if we want to continue this relationship. I'm about to be, my company, Shay Shay Media, is about to be a free agent. Okay. So that means Nightcap and Club Shay Shay, I'll be able to take it wherever we mm -hmm. want to go, mm -hmm. Ocho. Could stay with the volume. That's a very, very strong possibility. I'll stay mm -hmm. with the volume. So let's just say, y'all want to think I would, I'll be willing to risk that. So next five to seven years, potential 120 to $200 million. Mm -hmm. You think I would be willing to risk mm -hmm. that? To do this. I mean, I want you guys, because there are some guys that have podcasts. Because everybody that does podcasts, uh, uh, LaBelle, they don't make money. You don't make money unless you got advertisers and sponsors. Let's just say for the sake of argument, I was an upstart podcast, okay. and I wanted to get people's attention. Now, okay, that I do makes that. Sense. Now it makes sense. Now you, can, now you have a legit argument. All y'all that's talking about I did this for stage, I'm on top of you. Mm. Pause. I'm on Pause. top. You do, hey, okay, let's just say we 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 climb yes, on a mountain and I'm up, I'm a, I'm at a higher stage than what you guys are. Right. No the only people yeah. that can say if, if Joe Rogan wants to say it was stage to so I was trying to mm -hmm. catch him. Okay. If uh, Alex Cooper call your daddy, okay, I ain't finna argue with her. She's gotten two or three hundred million dollar contract. We know what Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is the top mm -hmm. of the food chain. The Kelsey brothers, new heights. But bro. Who, just to refute an, just to refute a rumor, would be willing to forego potentially a hundred, two hundred million dollars? Mm -hmm. I've got six figure and seven figure sponsors to say, "Well, uh, I'm sorry, Shannon. We don't know if you know we should continue this relationship." So I'm just gonna say, "Hey, but I want to shoot down that rumor. At least now I lost a hundred million, two hundred million. They ain't gonna think mm -hmm. I'm gay because who would have did that? If he would have gay, he wouldn't." Even Really, y'all? All right, so y'all just heard what Shannon Sharp had to say, and to be honest with y'all, I don't believe shit he's saying. Well, we don't believe you. You need more people. Um, he could just be making it up that he lost sponsorships and a $200 million deal. Until I see receipts, I don't believe it. I think, you know, people with common sense are now looking at this situation for what it is, and so now he's trying to scramble and come up with an excuse as to, you know, if I was to fake this, then why did I lose sponsorships? Again, we need receipts. <laughs> no way. No way. I want to see the receipts. Otherwise, I'm not buying it. Cameron's story sounds more plausible than Shannon Sharp's. You know, he, he does the numbers and, you know, other podcasts are beneath him. So why would he need to do this for attention? So... That was his opinion. That was his response. 
And then yesterday, he decides to go to social media, to go to Twitter and Instagram. And this is what he decided to post as a 56, 57-year-old man, okay? He says, that's my Michelle shirt dropped. Annoyed faced emoji. I told y'all to leave the lady alone, but y'all kept harassing Unk, knowing that man ain't got but one good nerve left. Thanks to Chad, so here we are. Are you happy now? Anguish face emoji. Then he puts down at Shannon Sharp at Ocho Cinco at, at 84 CLO. The shirt says, that's my Michelle nightclap film department. Then the other shirt says, 69 Michelle of the official fuel of nightcap. To me, not only is this tacky, it's low-key harassment at this point. You're claiming to tell everybody to leave that lady alone, but you're putting her more on blast. You're now turning this sexual quote-unquote exploit with this woman, this whole my private moment, I'm so embarrassed that my private moment was leaked publicly. You're now publicly shaming Michelle. Michelle didn't ask for this. If this is even real, let, let's keep that 100%. If this situation is even real, Michelle didn't ask for all that. She didn't ask for her audio to be leaked, and she damn sure did not ask for merch. We don't know if Michelle's even getting a cut. I find this whole thing distasteful because this is a grown man in his 50s and you're calling yourself trying to make money off of a situation that supposedly embarrassed you. You know, the irony of the situation is a lot of people never even knew this whole gay situation, um, these gay rumors. But the more that his antics are coming out, now a lot of people are giving him the Jesse Smollett treatment. They're like, okay, now it's starting to seem like you're trying to hide something and that you're trying to really push a narrative that you're not gay. Because at this point in time, he's just doing the most. People are really starting to peep game and they're not feeling it. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys some of the responses that people had to say concerning Shannon Sharp and this whole t-shirt debacle on Twitter. So this person says he totally posted the audio tape accidentally on purpose. No question in my mind. Just goes to show you, you can have all the muscles in the world, have a Hall of Fame NFL career, keep your muscles well after normal age, and still be insecure about your sexuality. Somebody else said, you can't be saying you cried because your most private moments was heard, then sell a shirt that says, that's my Michelle. Another person says, who in the hell would buy a shirt with that's my Michelle on it? Not even Obama would buy something that corny. Somebody else says, anybody that buys That's My Michelle shirt that Shannon is selling needs to be put down like a dog. Somebody else says, not one to pocket watch, but buying one of those That's My Michelle shirts with your hard-earned money serves what purpose? Somebody else says, That's My Michelle shirts is grotesque. Another person says, I know good and damn well Shannon Sharp did not make no damn merch for his engagement in sexual activities on Instagram Live. Like you really made a That's My Michelle shirt slapping face emoji. Somebody else says, dropping shirts that say That's My Michelle, then also bringing up on the show by saying, well, they can't say I'm gay now. Laugh my effing ass off. Like what? Somebody else says, why does the demographic of corny blacks, 40 plus, always feel the need to put on shirts? Jasmine Crockett, bleach, blonde, bad built, butch body. Shannon Sharp, that's my Michelle, tomato, 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 okay? Somebody else says, imagine you wear a shirt, that's my Michelle, and you gotta explain what that means. Another person says, nah, anybody with that's my Michelle shirt is a weirdo. How's this shirt worthy? Somebody else says, if I see you with the That's My Michelle shirt on and you a fan, you need to be jailed. Another person says, That's My Michelle shirt is nasty work. Like you need to be put on a list if you wear that shirt. Another person says, laugh my ass off. Why the fuck would you wear a shirt that says That's My Michelle if you don't have a Michelle? Somebody else says, if I see a nigga in the That's My Michelle shirt, they're throwing a brick at them. Somebody else says, seriously, what the F is this? Another person says, this is so fucking stupid. Another person says, why the F would anyone, I mean anyone, wanna wear a t-shirt with the quote that another man said during sex to a woman that you don't know? I'm struggling to grasp the stupidity and the desperation to hear at who thought this would sell. Another person also said, how you gonna slide with your woman with a shirt on that says that's my Michelle and your lady's name is Keisha? Who signed off on this bullshit? Another person says, 
Ew. Can't even imagine observing somebody wearing a That's My Michelle t-shirt in public. So as you see, social media was not having it. They drug him for the filth, as they should. At this point, this is corny. Now, if he was so secure about these shirts and it was innocent and, you know, he's just trying to give the people what he what they want, this man has not deleted the post. This is how embarrassing this was for him. The whole page doesn't exist. Everything has been taken down. He took it off of Instagram. He took it off of Twitter because he got drugged so bad. This further lets me know that this whole situation was planned. This is embarrassing and very unprofessional. You know, at this point, if this is a true situation, this is not okay. And this is very embarrassing for Michelle, who didn't ask to be put in that position. Like, none of it makes sense whatsoever. And like y'all told me on Instagram Live, you got to go through at least four buttons to even get live. So to me, I feel like all of this was staged. It was probably pre-recorded because I also found out that you can pre-record videos and schedule them to go live just like you can on YouTube. I can make a pre-recorded video, schedule the time, and then it can drop. Uh, and I guess now Instagram has that same feature. So for all we know, Michelle could have been his hands. He could have had Michelle pre-record what she was going to say because... All of this is to really prove that he's not gay. The firing of Hollywood and distancing himself from Hollywood, AKA dick print, you know, and then he, he's selling Viagra. Now he's trying to sell the shirts. Um, it seems to me his ego is definitely overtaking him. Even the way he snapped on Ocho and, and you know, going off the way he did. I think Shannon Sharp's mask, unfortunately, is starting to slip. And y'all know I was a big fan of Shannon. I love Club Shay Shay. I encourage a lot of y'all to, you know, go check out his channel and stuff like that. But this is the tackiest shit I've ever seen. You know, we get on young people for clout chasing and for turning, you know, just anything into a t-shirt. But at 57 years old, we didn't need a t-shirt of this. This man has plenty of money. He has a successful show. He really did not need to go this route at all, but it just shows you that, you know, the fame that he got off of that Cat Williams interview has really gone to his head. Because if this was a real situation, he would have addressed it the one time and kept it pushing. He would have addressed it in a professional manner, been apologetic. He wouldn't have been bragging, pushing Viagra, you know, clapping back at other people. When you're embarrassed by something and you want to dead the situation, you're dead it. You're not going to keep talking about it. You're not going to be selling merch. You're not going to do that because it was a quote unquote traumatic time in your life. So to me, at this point in time, Shannon Sharp is doing the most and it's tacky. And I'm glad that Twitter and a lot of men really held him accountable. And Shannon Sharp even says that he's seen as a role model to many people. But your actions are saying otherwise. If you're not gay, let the shit fly. There's nothing cute about this. And like I said, if this is a quote unquote real situation, I'm starting to feel bad for Michelle because Michelle didn't ask for any of this. Now you're laughing in her face. So anyways, that is my thoughts on this entire situation. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping, tea sippers I want to know your opinions on this. You know, do you feel like he is doing the most because he's trying to um, basically distance himself from these gay rumors? Do you feel like this whole my Michelle quote unquote, accidental leak. Do you feel like this was even an accident at this point? Or do you feel like this was all done on purpose for him to quell the gay rumors and to make even more money hand over fist? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading your comments down below. Don't forget to hit the video with a like. Feel free to share the video and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.